Pitt in West Virginia, it's a little bit over 24 hours away, folks. And guess what? We have more guests on today. Ethan Buck from West Virginia Sports Now joins me today. And we're going to talk about more than just JT Daniels and Keaton Slovis. We're going to talk about what West Virginia brings to the table offensively and defensively and where Pitt could maybe exploit them. It's all coming up today on this episode of Locked on Pitt. Our Locked On Pit, your daily podcast on the Pittsburgh Panthers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to the Locked On Pit Podcast, everybody. It's Backyard Brawl Week. You know that we are pumping out the content this week. Had Mike Asti on last week from West Virginia Sports Now, and I had to bring Ethan Bach on from West Virginia Sports Now as well. Ethan, how you doing, man? I'm good, Nick. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, no problem, man, and great to have you on. I, I know that you know the, the, the Now networks are – interacting more and more than ever so it's, it's great to have you on uh locked on pit here man but i gotta ask you just to start this off how's it down in morgantown right now it's it's starting to pick up for sure i, I was telling nick before the show that i've never i didn't grow up in west virginia grew up in cincinnati ohio so i never really experienced old big east football too much uh but and then we've had we've had we've had a little we've had a little preview to this with basketball the last few years so but it's nothing like it's nothing like what football's been the last I would say three or four weeks it's, it's been crazy and now now that we're only pretty much hours away I, I can't wait to see the backyard brawl return I I legitimately can actually not wait to see this because this is something that I personally remember from my childhood um, when I was younger and now on a college campus with it coming up, you can kind of feel that energy and that electricity uh, start to go on by. And, and we know that the tailgates are going to be crazy and all of that. So whole game day experience, college game days coming to town. It's going to be huge prime time television appointment viewing here for Pitt and West Virginia. But Ethan, I, I want to talk a little bit about this West Virginia team because I know people are talking about how the backyard brawls back and, and all the change that has gone on in, in West Virginia and Neil Brown kind of putting up his final stand this year, if you will, bringing in Graham Harrell. We've heard all about those things. What about outside of JT Daniels on that offense, though? This is an offense that looks a lot different. No Letty Brown, but there's a lot of talented guys there, maybe in that wide receiving core, that could get hit a little bit of issues. Yeah, I would say I would say it looks familiar in a way. They did lose Letty Brown, Jarrett Deggy, obviously. Um, for different reasons, but you bring back Bryce Ford Wheaton, Caden Prather, who's a sophomore wide receiver. He should be, he should, this should be a breakout year for him. And also you return the entire offensive line. The offensive line wasn't that great last year, but you also just, you were ret just returning an offensive line in college football, especially in the transfer portal era is impressive anyway. So for Neil to bring in Graham Harrell as the offensive coordinator, kind of um, experiment a little bit without Jarrett Deggy, Letty Brown, See what you can do. See if you can put bigger numbers up this season for JT Daniels. It you said it was Neil's last stand. I would agree. This is this is his biggest game in Morgantown easily. You could argue the Virginia Tech game last season in Morgantown, but yeah, this is this pit game on Thursday night is Neil Brown's biggest game. In it, it really does feel like that for West Virginia, and I know. That you know, for both teams, this is an important game for West Virginia for different reasons. For Pitt, obviously, coming off that ACC championship season, huge for them to continue that momentum because they got Tennessee next week, which is probably going to be a top 25 matchup. But for West Virginia, you look at some of the guys in that receiving core. I really like Bryce Ford Wheaton a lot. I mean, I think that he has that height, weight, speed type thing that could really beat Pitt deep, six foot three. And I would not be surprised if he was a sub four five guy. He's super athletic. Sam James is solid. I've heard a lot about Reese Smith recently and, and what he could potentially do for that team. Um, so there's a lot of guys here, Kane Prather. Um, there's a lot of guys here in this kind of offense that you're still kind of figuring it out. But you also have that new backfield with Tony Mathis Jr. And and I've heard a lot of things about this backfield that it, it looks completely different. Obviously, in the air raid, it's going to look different. But 
just the talent, the personnel overall is, is a lot different in the running back room too, Ethan. Yeah, um, I really like Reese Smith as well. He comes in, will place Winston Wright as a slot receiver. Um, Bright, like I, I'm big on Bryce Ford Wheaton too. I love his height. I love his athleticism in the air raid offense. If him, if if Dan, if JT Daniels and Graham Harrell will, they'll probably be on the same page <laughs> with just familiar familiar faces and names. But just adding a six three wide receiver who's ve- very fast, like <laughs> Bryce Ford Wheaton could easily be one of the best receivers in the big 12. Yeah. And that's the thing about this whole thing is that like West Virginia as a whole, the team overall doesn't appear to be like this great team or anything. There's definitely holes on this team, but the skill talent, the very least with Ford Wheaton, Smith, James, it looks decent enough. And I think that's something to look at, but also Pitt is predicated so much on their pass rush. And so what do you think of that West Virginia offensive line? This was something that I, when I talked to Mike yesterday, he he thought that this was a big concern against Pitt because Pitt has so many good defensive linemen, Kalaja Kansi, Habibal, Nato, Desmond Alexander, John Morgan, and so on, and that this offensive line might not be able to hold up and get JT Daniels killed. Yeah, I would agree with Mike. I'm worried about the offensive line. I know a lot of fans in West, in West Virginia are hyping up bringing the line back. I understand why they are hyping that up. Like I said earlier, it's impressive to bring them all back, but you have to remember they allowed a lot of sacks last year. And was Jared Diggy that mobile? No, but still, he was under pressure a lot of times. So I I am worried if this game will be one. This game will be one in the trenches. It'll be one depending on which line on both sides performs well. Yeah, and and we know what Pitt's defense is kind of the weakness of that defense is right. I mean, you play quarters cover zero the whole time and well, you leave your men on the Island. So you give JT Daniels time. And I, and I think this is the one thing, like if that offensive line can hold up a little bit and get a few explosive plays going, I think JT Daniels is a good quarterback and is going to be able to push the ball down the field in order to kind of beat pit deep. And that's the one thing from the pit side of things that I am concerned about is that, you know, the, o- the O-line for West Virginia doesn't even have to hold up for a lot of the time, but it could take one, two plays, and West Virginia can make this a close game off of just the explosive play alone, which happens a lot against Pitt's defense. Yeah, I think this is what is really interesting about this year's team under Neil Brown and something that you've never seen under Neil Brown at West Virginia is passing deep. Jared Deggy, he would complete a lot of passes and be for many yards. It'd be just for a few yards. He would just throw it off quick. Now, with the under the air raid offense, JT Daniels could throw 20, 30 plus yards. And that's something we haven't seen under Neil Brown. So it if West Virginia does find something to beat Pitt on, and that's what it will be is on the deep ball. It certainly feels like that too. That could be the big thing. But uh, it's not much of a concern for Pitt. Usually the rush defense is usually their strong point. I mean, the whole scheme is designed to stop the run, but you know, Graham Harrell an interesting, has an interesting twist on the air raid where it's not like Mike Leach where you're going to throw 60 times a game and run maybe five. Like, they do run the ball a decent enough in Graham Harrell's air raid system. What? How do you replace a Letty Brown, and what does this run game look like? Yeah, Letty Brown, replacing Letty Brown is going to be tough because he was kind of like um, – I don't want to compare him to Le'Veon Bell, obviously, because, I mean, Le'Veon Bell is a, was a talent with the – but just having that traditional modern day running that could do both. Lee Brown was for West Virginia. That's really all he was. Like that's all their offensive was really last season. So, but backup was Tony Mathis last year. Now he's a starter. I don't. I I think Tony Mathis is a good running back. Is he Lee Brown? No. But he also is carrying momentum off of last year, rushing 118 yards against Kansas. Um. Even in the bowl game against Minnesota, he got some action in with Letty uh, opting out of the bowl game. But uh, I, I like Tony Mathis. And they have more depth this year with Jalen Anderson, Justin Johnson. So, uh, yeah, I, I'm i not worried about the run game for West Virginia this season, especially under Harrell. He'll get, he'll get them involved. I want to switch over to the defensive side. But first, folks, I want to let you know about BetOnline because BetOnline.net is your number one source for all your pro and college football betting needs and sports info this season. Find all the latest football league developments, game matchup news, and podcasts, including this year's 
opening week's games. If you want to bet on the backyard brawl right now, I think the line is seven on bet online. So an even seven, that's a touchdown. I think Pitt's going to win by a touchdown. You think West Virginia will cover that? Feel free to head over there and get that. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and the action. Bet online where the game starts. Now, Ethan, do want to switch over to the defense because I haven't even touched on the defense in this week just yet. And this West Virginia defense is something of a question to most Pitt fans. I think there's there's one name that everyone's going to know, and that's Dante Stills. He's been there, seems like, forever at this point. But no Akeem Mesidor anymore. And, and there's a lot of transition, it feels like, on this side of the football. Yeah. I mean, West Virginia lost a lot of players on defense in the transfer portal that were huge, especially in the last two years. But just off this offseason, Akeem Mesidor, Josh chandler Smito, yeah, it's – it's it's questionable. I I I like I like the line. I really do. And I like Charles Woods a lot as a secondary player. He'll be he's he's definitely an NFL um he's definitely an NFL type player. Um but then they brought also brought in a bunch of graduate transfers in that secondary. That secondary is going to be questionable. But if they can if they can somehow piece it together with the young guys that need to step up that they've brought in recently that yeah, they they really I'm really worried about the secondary, to be honest. Yeah, and you look at, at the team overall and, and some of the stats. I mean, Josh Chandler's gone. Sean Mahone is gone. So you look at, at some of the, the key players on this team. Of course, Akeem Mesidor is gone there on that D line. But there's a lot of change even in that linebacking core. And, and this is a versatile type of scheme you always have that bandit position where i I think jared bartlett's probably going to be this year um but you look at the spear position maybe just see your cox goes there i mean it's a that linebacking core as well looks like a position that has had a a lot of fluctuation over the offseason yeah and that's that's one part of the that's one part of the defense i think is really underrated for west virginia jared bartlett last season he he will probably be the bandit um, he had a breakout game against Virginia Tech. If he can somehow have another career day against Pitt, then West Virginia's defense will be fine. Um, like Lance Dixon, Penn State transfer. He played He played at West Virginia last year, um, but he's just starting to now actually get really involved. X Reload is a name that West Virginia fans know. He's been there since Dana Holgerson. Uh, I'm not too worried about the linebackers, just off of most of the guys that they have experience with. Even bringing in JUCO players like Lee Cogba, Pogba, um, just the things I've heard about him too. Um, linebacker, linebacker room is fine at West Virginia. Okay, so first level sounds like it's pretty good, but yet you talked about that secondary. What are the main issues here? You, you talked about how you think that they have a pretty good player in Charles Woods, who I think is also a pretty talented player. Pitt, though, is obviously going to be a, a team that is deeper than just, say, Kanani Mumfield, who's expected to be their wide receiver one, but Jared Wayne, Bartholomew, and others stepping up into that spot. What's the concern with this team, and how can Pitt learn from what they did last year to exploit them? I really think just off of the mystery and inexperience of the secondary, Charles Woods is really – he is actually the only – returning secondary player for West Virginia. I a lot of the guys a lot of the guys that are now stepping up in that role were freshmen last year or they're coming in as grad transfers. And but just as them as players, I I'm not feeling like if Slovis if Slovis gets going, he can throw deep too. If he's if he throws deep on West Virginia, I'm worried about the deep game there. That's why I mean the the this game will be won this game will be won by the line. Which offensive line can protect their quarterback for longer time, give them more time to throw. And as well as the defensive line on both sides, on both teams, can they get to the quarterback quicker? It's going to come down to deep balls and just playing in the trenches, basically. And I do find the parallels between these two teams, like extremely interesting to me um, because you have the new quarterbacks, obviously Daniel Slovis replacing Deggy Pickett. You have new offensive coordinators, Whipple, Signetti, and then you have, obviously, Harrell coming in um, with West Virginia. You have all the offensive linemen back. 
both these teams were re- get back all five O linemen, which is good for them. But I do think the one difference is the defense is that Pitt returns a lot of their defense and West Virginia does it, um, which is the big difference here. Now, obviously Pitt has a lot of different personnel this year uh, in terms of what they're going to do offensively. No Addison either. No Jordan Addison is obviously going to be big. Um, but Ethan, I kind of want to get your thoughts on this Pitt in a more heavily balanced focus. They're probably going to run the ball more and try to throw the ball more. How do you think that plays against this West Virginia D-line, linebackers, secondary? Yeah, I'm, I mean, it seems like Pitt's going to run the ball way more this season than last season, just off of losing Whipple. Uh, honestly, that's that will be an advantage for West Virginia. If, they, if, they're, if the, their defensive line is able to at least create pressure and at least stop the run in some capacity, Dante Stills is an NFL player. Taj Alston, he's a great player. Jordan Jefferson, another great player. They have great players on that defensive line to where to where they've created problems for teams like Oklahoma last season. And they almost beat Oklahoma and Norman. So they have these they have these pockets of games in the season where the defensive line is carrying them on on that side of the ball to where they they put themselves in a position to win games. And that's a dangerous component for Pitt. Experience versus experience on both sides of the ball, right? Experienced offensive line for Pitt, very experienced D-line as well for West Virginia. So that's going to be West Virginia's big crux uh, overall. I agree with that. And I I think that's their best hope to winning the game is that D-line stepping up. And then on the other side of the football, you have JT Daniels being able to hit two, three explosive plays. And this turns into maybe an uglier matchup, and it ends up being like a 24-21-ish type game. Yeah, I would be shocked if it's a high-scoring game, especially just week one, just with all the – both teams are mysteries. Like, that's what's so interesting about this year's edition of the Brawl. I think that's West Virginia's biggest, like, advantage in a weird way is the – mystery of you don't nobody knows how this team is going to be even if you've been at practice you understand kind of what they're going for but you don't know how it's going to translate into a game yeah you don't and and so it's going to be kind of interesting to look at exactly what occurs in this game because i'm still not sure what this pit team is um again Pitt has a lot of the same guys that you know and love if you're a Pitt fan. You can't see the Baldonados, the Israel Banicandas, the Jared Waynes of the world. They have them, but no Pickett, no Addison. That's big. Like Essentially, what I, I look at for Pitt in West Virginia is Pitt loses their two biggest stars and arguably two of the biggest reasons they were where they were last year versus West Virginia losing a whole fell swoop of their roster And it's a very interesting conversation to me to talk about which transition is more significant because I think both of them are significant in their own ways. Yeah, West Virginia's situation is extremely interesting because you lose a lot of starters from a team that went six and seven. They had to go four and two in the Big 12 in November just to even make a bowl game. (laughs) They lose one of those games. They don't even they don't even get the Phoenix and play Minnesota. So. It's interesting. They lost a lot of players, but at the same time, like, what's that to say? What's that to say? That's a bad move on Neil Brown to just sweep the entire game plan, bring in Harold, bring in Daniels. It's it's a good idea. Just experiment with something new. That's not been done under Brown with the last three years. Yeah, and I mean, it could work. It could crash and burn. But as we said before, this feels like his last opportunity to prove he is the guy in Morgantown. And so, yeah, the change factor of it all, it, it makes sense. Uh, like like how we look at Pitt basketball, for example, right? Jeff Capel probably on his last opportunity here this year. Well, Pitt has a vastly different roster, and it's very similar here for Neil Brown on the football side of things. Um, so I, I don't know how much I am a huge fan of Graham Harrell personally, but again, I'm also – I'm not as giddy as – uh, on Keaton Slovis as some Pitt fans are. So, and, and that that's a psychological battle that I'm looking forward to in this game because who knows these two guys better than each other? Like Keaton Slovis probably knows Graham Harrell better than anyone else does. And Graham Harrell knows Keaton Slovis probably better than anyone else does. And that type 
of dynamic between those two, I think it, it creates a fascinating opportunity and matchup for both of these teams. Yeah, that's just the, that's just the beauty of this backyard brawl. Like every storyline that you wanted, you're getting. Like <laughs> there's always a connection like within both West Virginia and Pitt, despite them turning over a lot of well, West Virginia turning over a lot of their roster at the same time with Pitt bringing in Slovis to replace Kenny Pickett. So I, I'm ready for the brawl. I I just, I just want this game to get over with in a good and bad way. Oh, for sure. I, I am looking forward to, to seeing this game. The atmosphere down there, it's Rib Fest too. So if you're like that, you got all of that. The parking lot's open at 2 p.m. So they're planning for a whole evening of tailgating and then college game day right at Akershire Stadium. I still hate that name, but it, it feels weird to say it. You know, Ethan, they're calling it the ACK now. The oh, ACK. Is, that, is that what it is now? It's the ACK for short? It's the ACK. Um, how do you spell the that? Act. How how are people spelling that? Just A C. Yep. Yeah, that's no. Bring back. I, I can't get down with it. <laughs> I can't get down with it. But 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 the pit players have been calling it the X. So they have made it their own thing. They've made it their own thing. I'm sure that the stadium is going to be insane. Um, both West Virginia and Pitt fans side probably going to be full. It's going to be crazy, and the reason I know how crazy this will be is because you see this game being talked about nationally, just everywhere. I mean, we aren't just talking about you know the ACC network talking about this and West Virginia's local radio and you know the Pitt's local radio. We're talking about like national shows getting on this thing and talking about the backyard brawl, and that to me kind of ups the stakes of this even more because all eyes are going to be on you. Like for both of these programs nationally, everything's going to be on you. So opportunity for both West Virginia and Pitt to, to really prove something here on a national scale. And the crazy part is I can't tell who has more pressure put on them. Is it, is it West Virginia with Neil Brown bringing in this new experiment or is it Pitt trying to basically carry the momentum off of last season into this year? and beat West Virginia. Like it, it's a it's it's the biggest rivalry game for both programs. So it stakes are high for everybody and it, both teams are under pressure, but which team is under pressure more? This is the real I'll, question. I'll take Pitt on that. And the reason why I say that is because this is the year for Pitt. Like this is the year, right? If if they want to step up into the next tier of college football, we're talking like the Michigan States, the Wisconsin's. Um that kind of tier of the world in college football, this is the year they have to do it. And, and they, and in order to do that, they have to be good again. And so to me, beating your rival who honestly, like, again, West Virginia's roster has talent, but Pitt's roster is better. I think, I, I think we can both agree on that. Pitt's roster is better um, just on paper. Obviously things on paper don't sometimes play out in practice, but Pitt looks like the more talented roster. This should probably be a game it should win. They're at home, and, and it's it, it, it's going to be you know a packed crowd with a lot of West Virginia fans. But Pitt's going to have a, a lot of fans there. It's at home. It's going to be on a national TV stand, so all eyes are on Pitt. And Pitt has a top probable top twenty five matchup the next week at home against Tennessee. So if you don't win this game, well, you're standing on the barrel of an zero and two start. I'd say the pressure's on Pitt just because look at West Virginia's next few games: what Towson and Kansas. Like even if West Virginia technically loses this game, they should probably win those two. Yeah, I I'll agree with your point. I I like Pitt as having the most pressure. Um, on the West Virginia side, if obviously who has the most pressure in the program, Neil Brown. <laughs> we've 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 discussed that the whole time. Um, his recruiting has helped him a lot stay here and keep people happy. But some there's gonna be there's gonna be needed more results on the field like Virginia Tech last year in Morgantown. Oh, for sure. There's no doubt about that. And I also love that West Virginia is playing Virginia Tech and Pitt in the same year. I think that's pretty fun. Both Thursday uh, night both Thursday night road games, too. It, it, it's fun. It, it it's is. just fun to have those rivalries, I think, that, that are going to be so great uh, regionally for both of these teams. Um, I And I the reason I say it's so great for Pittsburgh in particular is and you know West Virginia has is is he West Virginia is essentially I know it's Morgantown and everything and the whole state of West Virginia roots for West Virginia, but it's very Pittsburgh 
um, to, you know, West Virginia University has that Pittsburgh connection and you can see it. Look at all the WVU alums coming to Akershire Stadium. Look at all the Pitt alums coming. You know, we're not talking about just, you know, players that have played. We're talking Dan Marino, LaShawn McCoy, um, for Noel Devine. Like we're talking big names here on both sides. Um, so th this is huge. And then recruits too. I mean, have you seen the recruiting list, both not just in football, but basketball, basketball. Yeah. Um, like that's the thing. Basketball's had, you know, the whippy has a few really good basketball recruits here coming soon. Like Malik Thomas, uh, you look at, at Royce Parham, there's so many more guys there. And on the football side, you have a lot of guys too next year, right? Quentin Martin, obviously is a composite five-star right now, right here in the local area. You have a lot of different guys that are on top both in basketball and football. So this is a huge recruiting battle too. Yeah, especially recently with uh, West Virginia football really picking up their recruiting. Even on the basketball side, they're going after they're going after Pitt natives too on in West Virginia. So yeah, it's this is what this is what football rivalries are about though. This is the beauty of it. Even during even during the the doom and gloom of the transfer portal in the NIL era, you still have these recruiting battles on the field and on the court. So this is why I love about this is what I love about college football rivalries. I, I love it too, and and Pitt, it, Pitt's bringing in out of staters to see this. So we're talking Tyler Johnson coming in from New York to see this game. We got Pitt twenty twenty three football commits coming up. And I know if you're a Pitt fan, I know you know that they won Hakeem Williams. He won't be here, but he'll be down in Fort Lauderdale watching on his TV. I'm certain if you're West Virginia as well, you probably have guys like Rodney Gallagher that are probably going to be there. And in 2024-25 recruits are going to be watching West Virginia. This is this is a big thing for West Virginia. Pitt wins. Pitt gets themselves going. But I don't know how much it actually means in the grand scheme of thing. And Pitt like walks out with the win, right? Pitt probably needs to put together a full season. But West Virginia stamping a supremacy win over Pitt, that would do wonders for them locally, I feel like. Yeah, for sure. I mean <laughs> we we've said it like every time every every time. But Neil if Neil Brown this is Neil Brown's biggest game in Morgantown, and it would be a ranked win over Pitt, first first backyard brawl in eleven years. Like <laughs> New offensive coordinator Graham Harrell, new quarterback JT Daniels. You have all this momentum now. Off if they win this game, that they could they could theoretically even pull together a four zero start if they even go into Blacksburg and beat Virginia Tech. Do I think they will? I'm not sure, but just off of going a four zero into the Big Twelve, possibly that's that would do wonders for this program. Would be huge for West Virginia and for Pitt as well. Similar opportunity. What if they win this game and then beat Tennessee? You got Western Michigan and Rhode Island after that. You should be 4-0. And I keep saying, if Pitt goes to Georgia Tech at 4-0, they're going to be in the top 10. And that'll be huge for this Pitt team and the buzz around it. Ethan, man, thanks for coming on. Tell them where they can follow you, read your stuff, all of that. Yeah, so you can find me on Twitter at EthanBach underscore. I pretty much live there, so... That's pretty. That's really the only place that uh, that's worth even going looking for me. Um, I write. I write for uh, WV Men's Basketball and Recruiting at West Virginia Sports now. Um, recruiting starting to pick up again, so that's great. It's always great to have recruiting stories. And then, yeah, once once football starts, it just means basketball's right around the corner. So I'm excited. Also, if you're into hoops, make sure to check out the Portal Report. Ethan doing great stuff over there with guys in the, in the Sports Now Network. If you're WVU Pitt, if you're a national fan tuning into this one, to cover everything. So make sure you go check out that as well. Great stuff over there, Ethan. But folks, we have to end it here as always. This is a Pitt podcast. I know I have WVU fans on and analysts and, you know, reporters and all. But we have to end it as always here on this Pitt podcast by sailing. Hail to Pitt.